Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through a couple player props I like on prize picks for the NBA slate on Friday, January the 20th. Uh, we got a nine game Friday night slate tonight, so you know, should be a fun one guys. There's plenty of player props to choose from on this slate. We do have a free square today as well, and we have a uh, $20 risk-free play. So prize picks giving us some cool, uh, cool promos for today. They ran a 15-minute uh, flash sale last night. I don't know if you guys caught this or not, but uh, there was a free square available on the board last night for 15 minutes, but the site like completely just went to shit because so many people were trying to put the free square in that I think it like crashed the servers. I was able to get an entry in, luckily, um, but like shortly after I got my entry in, I couldn't even check anything because like the site had crashed. So PrizePix is giving us another free square today, and this one is available all the way up until tip-off. Um, Luka Doncic's point, points prop set is 0 0.5, so this is a free pick. Take the over or take Luka to have more than 0 0.5 points. Um, and obviously you have to find some picks to pair with that. I'll give out two picks in this video that I like. And if you want to play those two picks with the free square, you can. Or you can find some other picks you like. You can make like a six pick entry. Again, you do get a $20 risk-free play today. So your first flex play that you place today is risk-free up to $20. Um, so you can do a you know, five pick, six pick flex play, put $20 on it. Even if it loses, you'll get that $20 back in promo funds tomorrow. So some cool promos on prospects for today. If you guys aren't playing on prospects yet, again, make sure you sign up with promo code NOAH. Uh, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. But yeah, before we talk through our plays for today, guys, as always, if you guys enjoy these prospects videos, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And I do want to recap our plays from yesterday. Man, I felt like yesterday was going to be a good day for us. We did hit the over on Steph Curry's fancy score. Um, Curry had a really good game. I know he kind of got lucky getting like three steals and two blocks or something, but he had like 50-something fancy points. We needed like 42, 43. So Curry came through for us. Unfortunately, man, Pascal Siakam had a terrible second half. He didn't really do anything in the second half and came up short of his fancy score. If you guys were following along you know, during the game, he had, I think, 26 or 27 fancy points at halftime, um, and he obviously needed like 43 and a half to go over. He had 26 or 27 at halftime, um, and then in the third quarter, he, did, he got like five fancy points in the entire third quarter. He played the entire fourth quarter and literally recorded two fantasy points in the entire fourth quarter. I think he had he made a bucket, he had two turnovers, and then he grabbed two rebounds. So he's, he got 2.4 fancy points while playing the entire fourth quarter. I mean, man, like Siakam, more times than not, when he plays the entire fourth quarter, he's going to get like 12 fancy points because he's a you know fantasy point per minute player. But he just really wasn't doing anything in the second half. Um, his per minute production just really you know tailed down. It is what it is, I guess. You know, I felt good about that Siakam play. The dude played 40 minutes. Anytime he plays 40 minutes, especially in a game where the you know where the uh, or where the Raptors score like 130 points, I would feel pretty good about Siakam getting you know 43 and a half fantasy points. And it was looking good after the first half, but he really didn't do anything in the second half and came up short of his fantasy score. So our two pick entry, unfortunately, did not hit yesterday. But let's try and get back at it today. See if we can get a cash today. And I got two uh, points props I like for today. So obviously, you know, you got the Luca free square that you can play. Uh, but two other picks I like. We'll start off with the first play. I'm going to talk about Spencer Dinwiddie. His points prop sitting at 16 and a half today. And I do like the over here for Spencer Dinwiddie. Um, you look over his last five games. He's been playing pretty well lately. He's gone over in four straight. I don't want to look too much into his recent games, though. The reason I really like this prop for today is that Christian Wood is out for the Mavs. And Christian Wood being out is really, really big for Spencer Dinwiddie. And Spencer Dinwiddie has actually been like the biggest beneficiary this season with Christian Wood off the floor. If you take a look at the on-off splits this season without Christian Wood, so obviously Luka has a massive usage rate. Without Wood on the floor this season, Luka has a 39% usage rate. Really not surprising. You know, Luka has been dominating the usage in this Mavs offense this season. But in terms of you know usage differential, the guy who gets the biggest bump in usage has been Dinwiddie. 2.5% bump in usage. He has a 23.7% usage rate with Christian Wood off the floor this season. And per 36, he's averaging... 20.28 points per 36. So he's been his scoring definitely increases without Wood. And you think about this Mavs team, think about their starting lineup. It's going to be Dinwiddie, Luka, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dwight Powell, and Dorian Finney-Smith. Those first three guys, those are going to be the guys taking all the shots and doing you know all the offense. The offense is going to run through those three guys because you think about Dwight Powell. I mean, Dwight Powell is just a screen setter and a rim runner. He's not going to take shots. He's not going to demand usage. You think about Dorian Finney-Smith. He's a very low usage player. He's a good defender, but he's out there for, for his defense. He's not out there to take shots. If he does take shots, they're usually going to be like corner threes. He's like a you know, better version of P.J. Tucker. 
So the guys that can really create their own offense in this Mavs lineup, their starting lineup, it's Luka, Dinwiddie, Tim Hardaway Jr. Christian Wood's a guy that can create his own offense, but obviously he's not playing today. So the three guys that should really dominate the usage tonight for the Mavs should be Dinwiddie, Luka, and Tim Hardaway Jr. And you look at Dinwiddie in the game that he's played without Christian Wood this season. So Wood has missed four games that Dinwiddie has played in. And in those four games, Dinwiddie has 29, 33, 17, and 25 points. So his scoring has been really good in the games without Christian Wood. I expect him to be basically the number two option on offense. You would think, you know, Miami, a good defensive team, they're going to try and do whatever they can to slow down Luka here, make other guys beat them. And obviously that could mean more opportunity for a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie. Um, you look at the the uh, the Heat this season in terms of you know, where they really struggle. They do give up a lot of three-point attempts. And th so far the season in terms of three-pointers made, they're giving up the fourth most threes made per game. And you know, Dinwiddie is a guy that likes to take a lot of threes. Sometimes you know, a lot of his scoring can come from like wide-open threes. If like Luka's getting double-teamed, they can kick it out to Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie is a guy that can drive to the basket, but he does like to take a lot of threes. That's where Miami does give up a lot of you know, their offenses, you know, three-point attempts. So... I think this spot actually sets up pretty well for Dinwiddie. I think not having Christian Wood is a big boost for him, and he's been really good in the games without Christian Wood this season. He's been playing really well as of late, too, so I feel like kind of all the boxes are checked here for, for Dinwiddie today. So going to be taking him to have more than 16.5 points as our first pick for today. And then the pick I like to pair with that, if you want, I guess you could, well, you technically you couldn't play this with the Luka free square because, you know, you, you can't have two guys on the same team. So I would say you could play this with Luka, but yeah, you can't have two guys on the same team. But if you want, you can play this other guy with, you know, these two picks, make a three pick entry. Um, but I want to talk about John Morant's points prop setting at 27 and a half. And I also like the over here going up against the Lakers. This is obviously a really, really good matchup, really, really good game environment. You look at the total in this Lakers-Grizzlies game, of all the nine games today, this is the highest total on the slate, 243 and a half total here between the Lakers and Grizzlies. I think this is a national TV game. The one thing that concerns me a little bit here is can the Lakers keep this game closed? This Grizzlies team is really, really good. Um, they're playing really well right now. They're a really good defensive team. They're they're just good in general. They have a great offense, and they have they play great defense too. So this is definitely a tough matchup for the Lakers. But if the Lakers can keep this game close to where Ja plays his full minutes, Really like this spot for Ja, and I think he's definitely got a good chance to score 28 points here. You know, his scoring has definitely kind of been up and down as of late. And, you know, when the Grizzlies are fully healthy, when they have Desmond Bain, when they have Triple J, when they have Dylan Brooks, you know, it's it can be kind of like, you know, one night it can be Desmond Bain who has a big scoring game. One night it could be Ja. Maybe it's Triple J that gets hot. But normally, more times than not, we can bank on Ja leading this team in usage, being the guy that takes, you know, most of the shots. You know, you look over his last five games, he's gone over this line in three out of five. He has had some tough matchups, though, against Cleveland. He did go over against Phoenix. Indiana, you know, thought maybe he would do a little bit better there, but he did do really well against San Antonio, did do really well against Orlando. He's done really well in good matchups this season, and this is obviously a great matchup. The Lakers, so far this year, in terms of pace, in terms of defense, their defense hasn't been that great, and in terms of pace, they're playing at the third fastest pace in the league this year, So, and, and the Grizzlies are fifth in pace. So both these teams are top five in pace this season. That's one of the reasons you're seeing such a high total in this game. And we know Ja is a guy that likes to push the pace. He can score in transition. And, you know, he's one of these guys that I think can give the Lakers a lot of trouble. Their transi transition defense has been pretty bad this year. Um, so I think this is a spot where Ja can definitely thrive. And you look at, like, his odds on DK Sportsbook. Got pretty good odds on DK Sportsbook right now. The over 27.5 points, it's minus 130. So, you know, odds are heavily favoring the over here. And I know recently these teams have played a few times, and Ja has had, like, um, two out of his last three games against the Lakers, he's had 40 points. He had 41 points against them um, once last season, then he had 40 points against them as well. Other games, you know, he's gone under, but I don't want to look too much into, like, recent performance against the Lakers. Really want to try and focus on today. I think it's a really good matchup for Ja. I think this sets up as a really good spot. Lakers, again, play really fast. This should just be a great game environment. One concern is maybe blowout. I could see the Lakers getting blown out here, but they are playing at home. I think playing at home makes it a little bit more likely this game stays competitive. And if it does, I like Jaws chances of scoring 28 points. So these will be our two, I guess, technically three picks for today. The Luka free square plus Spencer Dinwiddie more than 16 and a half points and John Morant more than 27 and a half points. Um, as always, guys, these aren't going to be the only picks I play for today. I do have more plays that I will be sharing over on Patreon. Um, every play I do provide on Patreon, I do give a full write up for. So if you guys want to check out the Patreon plays, um, you can check those out linked down below in the description. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate you watching. 
Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, if you guys are new to Prize Picks, sign up for Prize Picks. Use that promo code NOAA when you do sign up, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. But best of luck tonight, guys. Thanks as always for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.